Welcome, YouTubers, to another tutorial from Stutter Tutoring on mole conversions. This is Chapter 4, OpenStax, First Edition, Problem Number 73. It's a very wordy problem with some complicated-looking formulas, but our approach to solve this problem is like any other problem. We're asked to determine the limiting reactant and the percent yield from this uh, situation. Here we are mixing 0.4031 grams of sodium oxalate, highlighted here in yellow, with 1.481 grams of uranyl nitrate highlighted here in green. In order to determine which is the limiting reactant, it is easiest to simply determine the yield each would produce. To do that, we will start with grams, as shown, and convert them both to moles. From each of these moles, we will then calculate how many moles of product can be formed. Then we will convert to grams of the product and the lesser of the two masses will be the theoretical yield and it will help us identify which of the reactants are the limiting reactant. So let me highlight the steps again. In the first step we will convert both of the grams into the corresponding moles using molar mass. Then we will use the balanced chemical equation to convert from moles to moles of the corresponding um, product. In step three we will convert from moles to grams of the product using its molar mass and then we'll go ahead and identify the limiting reactant and theoretical yield and finally calculate the percent yield. So let me show you how um, we first determine the molar masses. We need a lot of molar masses here so let's just go ahead and do it now. Um, let's start with sodium oxalate highlighted in yellow. This is com uh, composed of sodium, carbon, and oxygen. So we will use the periodic table and the subscripts in the formula. There are two uh, sodium atoms here for a total of 45.98 and we have two carbon atoms for a total of 24 and finally we have four oxygen atoms for a total of uh, 63 and so we sum all these up to get the molar mass of 133.998 remember that molar mass is the mass in grams of one mole of any substance in the same way we will calculate the molar mass of uranyl nitrate highlighted in green this is composed of the elements uranium, oxygen, and nitrogen. Pay close attention as we look at the subscripts in this formula. Uh, there's one uranium. Okay, that's pretty easy. There are two oxygens here, and there are some oxygens within the formula and a parenthesis outside. So there's a total of six oxygen atoms in these two nitrate ions. Okay, so that's a total of eight oxygens or 127. Nitrogen is relatively easy to see. We've got just one nitrogen there from the subscript of one and we have a two outside the parenthesis so there are a total of two nitrogen atoms there. Okay so if we add all these up we get the molar mass of 394 for the uranyl nitrate starting material. We won't need it right now but let's go ahead and do the same for uh, the product molecule. This is comprised of uranium, oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. So there's one uranium. All right, look at the oxygen. There are a bunch of different subscripts. There's a two here, there's a four here, and then there are three adjoined water molecules. Each water molecule has one oxygen, so three times one is three there. So two and four and three gives us the total number of oxygen atoms in this formula. Now for carbon, we've just got a simple subscript of uh, two there. And so there are two carbon atoms for a total of 24. For the hydrogen, uh, again, you've got to look at the three water molecules. There's three H2O, so that's six hydrogen atoms. And if we go ahead and add all these up, we get the molar mass of this product, which is 412.091. Great, now what we want to do is convert from grams to moles. Again, I'm going to use color coding to keep track of the reactants. We have 0. Point, um, let me get those molar masses back in there and let's set up our conversion bars. Now, we have 0. 0.4031 grams of sodium oxalate in yellow and 1.481 grams of uranyl nitrate in green. So to convert from moles to grams, we use the molar masses and notice how the moles goes up on top and the molar mass of sodium oxalate on the bottom. And similarly, we have moles of uranyl nitrate and the molar mass of uranyl nitrate on the bottom. So the uh, units nicely cancel there to give us moles of reactant. All right. 
In step two, we want to convert from moles to moles using the balanced chemical reaction. Let's go ahead and get this uh, set up. In the balanced chemical reaction, we see that one mole of uranyl oxalate will react with one mole of sodium oxalate. So let's go ahead and um, uh, write these in here. One mole of product is formed per one mole of sodium oxalate, and one mole of product is formed from one mole of uranyl nitrate. Again, the units nicely cancel here, and the units are important when doing this. Okay. In the third step, we want to convert from moles to grams. Again, we want to use the molar mass of the product. Let's get those molar masses back again so we can remember. So we want to use the one here in orange, 412.091. And so let's set up our uh, conversion here. And what we want to do is uh, put the molar mass up on top and one mole on the bottom so that the moles will cancel, okay, in both cases. So here I'm again showing how the units um, nicely uh, work out to cancel. So uh, what we see from the top calculation is 1.240 grams of product. In the bottom we have 1.549 grams of product. So I'm going to highlight the um, that one in yellow and this one in green so you know which uh, starting material gave these different amounts. Okay, As you can see the 1.240 grams is lower and that comes from the sodium oxalate. So that means sodium oxalate is the limiting reactant. Okay, and there's my units canceling there, so you can see how that works out. Okay, step four is to identify the limiting reactant and theoretical yield. As mentioned, sodium uh, oxalate is the limiting reactant because it theoretically produces a smaller amount of product. We calculated the theoretical yield to be 1.240 grams of product. Okay, here's the word problem back again, and you'll see that it mentions this 1.073 grams of solid was obtained, so we know that the theoretical yield is 1.240 grams, okay? Now the experimental yield from the word problem is 1.073 grams, and to determine the percent yield, we calculate the experiment yield over the theoretical yield and multiply by 100%, okay? And that gives us a value of 86.53% for the uh, yield. Uh, so I hope this video is helpful for you. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel.